In the world of affordable watches, there are few models that are considered true cult classics, each with passionate followings that almost seem bigger than the watch itself. Now, the Russian-made Vostok Amphibia, it's an automatic dive watch, which at full retail price costs around 70 bucks. But it has one of the most passionate followings out there for pretty much any watch. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at really what makes this watch, $70, such a cult classic. Let's jump into it. So in covering the Amphibia today, we're gonna to be looking at four primary aspects looking at the timepiece. So first starting off with a basic history of the watch, then going into a little bit of details of the journey it was to purchase this thing, then go into some details of the watch in general, and then share some final thoughts on basically why it's so loved. Now, before we jump into this video, I do wanna direct, because we're talking about affordable dive watches, some awesome affordable dive watches on teddybaldasar.com, some being from Orient, so Japanese powerhouse brand Orient that has really, I think, just emerged as even a better value in the last few years. You could look at watches like their Kamasu that have great wearing dimensions despite being a 41 millimeter case, or the Kano for those that may be a little bit more uh, needed in terms of the diameter size. You can also look over at Citizen with their ProMaster collection. We're full authorized dealer of both brands. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support will all come with a factory warranty. If you love affordable dive watches, definitely worth checking out. Now getting back into the Amphibia and starting with a bit of history. So Vostok as a brand has been around for a long time, having first been founded after the first Moscow watch factory was evacuated to Chistopol in Western Russia in 1942. After the war, the factory became a major producer of movements and complete pocket and wrist watches, producing millions of units a year by the early 1960s for both civilian and Soviet military use. But in 1961, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin was launched into space aboard the Vostok 3KA capsule. And to honor Gagarin's achievement, the watch factory in Chistopol built watches signed with the Vostok name before renaming the brand itself to Vostok Russian for East, officially in 1969. And in the early 1960s, there were two designers at Vostok to pave the way that allowed this watch that we're gonna be looking at today to be created. And those two designers were Mikhail Fedorovich Novikov and Vera Fedonorova Belova. These two were tasked by the Soviet Ministry of Defense to create a diving watch capable of functioning reliably down to 200 meters for use by Soviet Navy's frogmen and submarine rescue efforts. Now this objective was all the more challenging considering the limitations faced by the brand in terms of its limited manufacturing capabilities, which were some ways behind Swiss and Japanese watch industries of that same era. Ultimately, after approaching the overall Amphibia design in a novel way, with a case that allowed the case back to be compressed slightly in order to make the watch more watertight, the Amphibia was born in 1967 and went on to be used by civilians as well as Soviet military divers for decades to come. Given the extremely approachable price point and interesting history, the Vostok Amphibia has a lot of appeal within enthusiast circles and has grown its following pretty organically over the years without any marketing or a solid distribution as well. Now that is a fact that can make a Vostok significantly harder to get your hands on compared to say another cult classic like the SKX, for example, a process that I got experience firsthand when I decided to make this video. So after some digging on the watch that I wanted to get, I purchased this particular Amphibia from a reputable seller at the price of $78, including shipping from Kazan, a city in southwestern Russia near Chistopol. Now I paid for the watch on February 16th, and once I just got the tracking number and realized it didn't work, I basically just forgot about it and you know went about my life and just hoping that it would eventually arrive here. Fast forward to May 4th, and the much crumpled and well-worn envelope arrived finally here at our office in Cleveland. And looking at the package, I can't help but imagine the places that this little amphibia saw along its way. And the bag that it came in was pretty decrepit, it was falling apart, very simple box on the inside, and was kind of this, this sketchy, weird experience to get this thing over here. I, I would imagine they're getting hard narcotics over the internet, it's just as difficult as getting this watch to you. Uh, but that's kind of the fun, I think a lot of people that are familiar with this brand expect when getting their pieces. So all in all, basically two months from ordering to finally getting the watch. 
But now with the watch finally in hand after some time, we can dig into an overview of what you're really getting into for your $70 with the Vostok Amphibia. Now, compared to a lot of my other reviews, this is going to be a bit abbreviated, just given the fact that the Amphibia's execution is, as you would expect for the price, relatively simple overall. Still though, there are some defining elements of the Amphibia that enthusiasts, I think, know and love and also maybe don't fully appreciate. And that was even including myself as I think I have overlooked the Amphibia for a bit. I've looked at it in the past, but I've only kind of just continued to gain appreciation for it as time has went on. Now, even the most basic Amphibia is available in a wide range of sizes denoted with a three number code, such as the 090, the 110, the 420, etc. Featuring a range of shapes and diameters around 39 millimeters to around 44 millimeters or so. Now we selected the mass appealing 120 case for this review with its 41 millimeter diameter and easy wearing 49 millimeter lug to lug distance. Now given the domed acrylic crystal on this model, the thickness is pretty significant at 15 millimeters, but given the dome effect, it isn't much of an issue on the wrist as long as you aren't worried about dress cuffs. But if you're trying to wear this with a suit, you are a certified wild person. I'm not going to say much about the silicon diving strap because it does leave a bit to be desired to be quite frank about it. And most enthusiasts are gonna probably go to replace it right away. But it does have 18 millimeter lugs that offer quite a few different options in that regard if you do wanna swap it out. And we quickly swapped it out for a gray NATO that works really well with the color format of this. This is also available on teddyballstar.com. We can link to it in the description down below. In terms of finishing, it's important to note that the stainless steel Amphibia case is polished all over and features some of the most straightforward architecture you could probably ask for, the complete slew of 90 degree angles. The large crown does feature subtle crown guards and does screw down, but feels extremely wobbly when unscrewed to a point where you might feel like, oh my goodness, I broke the thing. However, that is far from a defect here. This is simply a result of a special decoupling system designed to isolate the crown stem and the movement from any shocks incurred by the crown itself, more off the wall engineering here in action. Another feature of the Amphibia that differentiates from almost all other watches on the market is the lock ring style case back, which features a vertically brushed and engraved central portion that snaps onto the watch case before being secured with locking in a way that feels a bit like the top of a mason jar and enables the solid 200 meters of water resistance, which has been endorsed by a member of our team, Ben, who has worn many amphibias extensively in his career previously as a commercial diver. But if that isn't enough to give you some confidence in the amphibia, the watch also was recently tested with a commercial grade water depth simulator, which I can link to the video down below because it is here on YouTube, only seizing to function at around 800 meters. Pretty impressive for a watch, but ridiculous at this price point and a testament to the thoughtful way that this thing was engineered and really what's on display with the Amphibia. Approaching the front of the watch, we have a snap-on engraved diver's elapsed time bezel executed in chrome brass and complete with engraved paint-filled markers. When the Amphibia is brand new, this bi-directional friction fit bezel is very hard to operate to say the least, but similar to how you would have to break in your new shoes, here you have to break in your new bezel. With a bit of love, it has greatly improved since it first arrived and now is really just rotating in either direction pretty gracefully. Well, as gracefully as you would expect for something that is kind of more friction fitted. Gazing into the heavily domed acrylic crystal, we have a dial which in this case is inspired by one of the original Vostok Amphibia designs of the late 1960s. We are dealing again with a bare bones utilitarian execution with white on black printed triangular and rectangular markers paired with a pencil and arrow style handset. Under the macro lens though, the level of finishing is surprisingly holding up pretty well, especially considering this is a $70 watch at the end of the day, which for context is less than overnight shipping for most luxury watches. Dial text in this case is rather minimal and all in Russian, which at least adds a bit of charm and visual interest to the piece as a whole, as you're not gonna be seeing money dials that are gonna look like this and have this array of text. In terms of luminescence, the Amphibia dial does feature small plots of loom, which glow Pretty mediocrely at best, although the loom at the handset could be described as functional, albeit also pretty dim, making this better probably for daytime use overall. But the handset is a little bit stronger than the loom plots along the outside. So those familiar with the Amphibia also are aware that they are extremely wide range in terms of the dial variants, many featuring printed graphics like the best known but goofy scuba dude, as well as many with military style markings. While it is at times hard to take all of these crazy dial variants 
experience pretty seriously, there is something undeniably fun about the affordable wide range of options. So besides the playful dial options and impressive water resistance, the most central and noteworthy aspect of the Amphibia collection overall is the inclusion of an in-house movement. Yes, you heard that right, an automatic in-house movement. For $70, it's frankly a little bit ridiculous that any brand, whoever or wherever it might be, can produce a fully in-house mechanical automatic watch movement, but Vostok has done it since the beginning. And these calibers are a key aspect to kind of the passion so many have for this brand because they simply work and seemingly no matter what is really thrown their way. Despite a utilitarian level of finishing, Vostok's calibers are known to be reliable and durable. And while the out of the box accuracy is stated at minus 20 to plus 60 seconds a day, that leaves a lot to be desired. In the terms of timekeeping, these Vostoks typically outdo that and are pretty easy to regulate even at home to pretty solid specifications. In terms of its general specs, the Vostok 2415B featured in this Amphibia has 31 joules and oscillates at 19,800 vibrations per hour. So that's a 2.75 hertz beat rate, non-hacking, so this movement doesn't stop when you pull out the crown to the farthest position to set precise time. Does feature hand winding, does take a little bit love because of that crown and its decoupling system, and has a power reserve of 31 hours. In terms of accuracy, just tested out this particular one, so just to give some anecdotal evidence, this one's running at about just under plus 30 seconds a day, which is not great by any means, but this is a $70 mechanical watch. I probably will play around with it, maybe try to get a little bit better performance out of it, but on par with some really non-regulated entry-level Miyota or Seiko movements. So while this caliber is nothing sexy from a watchmaking perspective, it is impressive that these work at all just given the price and even more impressive considering the reputation for solid build construction and reliability that these calibers have earned over the years. So now to address this idea. Now, why is Vostok so beloved? And if you just take off just the maybe snobby attitude and just look at what these watches are able to accomplish for an affordable price range, it is pretty commendable. The manufacturing process behind these is interesting, it's unorthodox, and that's partially why I think some, so many people go in the direction of these. Of course, they are affordable, and that is going to, you know, I think get a lot of people on your side when you're talking about $70 watches and being automatic, mechanical, in-house. That's something that's gonna definitely fall in the favor. But apart from that, and why I've kinda just, you know, worn this for a little bit more than I was expecting to, was really, I think, just the kind of fun and endearing nature that these things have. Now you have some really goofy designs on these with the scuba dudes and things of that nature that uh, quite frankly are not gonna be for me and I know not gonna be the same for a lot of other people. But I had this thing on and my girlfriend was looking at me, she's like, why are you wearing that thing? And at the end of the day, I think the reason why I was wearing it and I was you know, taking off watches that were really you know, higher end watches and all things of different you know, backgrounds and prices and I just was, wearing this thing, I caught myself just wearing it on a gray NATO strap and just having some fun with it, is that idea. It's just fun. And I think at the most rudimentary level, it kind of reminded me of that journey into watches in a way. There's nothing that's flashy about these things. There's nothing that's necessarily pretty about these things. And that's ultimately why I think people enjoy them. They kind of are just brutes in what they're able to try to accomplish. And I get it. I get why these things are liked. And although I'm not gonna be someone that's gonna buy like 15 Boss stocks, I get the people that do. And I think these are great entry doors or things that you can kind of look back towards on your journey and just have some fun with and to just remind yourself not to take this thing too seriously. And the reason why you got into this at the beginning was because you wanted to have fun. And these watches are pretty damn fun. But all right guys, I'd love to see comments down below. What do you think of the Vostok Amphibia? Are these the greatest watches in the world in terms of their construction? No, but they're also $70. And I think they represent something that's pretty cool. And they also have engineering that is a bit outside of the box and are fun things to just enjoy if you are a true watch nerd. Uh, but love to see your take down below. What do you think of these things? I think they're almost kind of become like a meme in watches in some ways, like whenever you, you know, have a watch and say how much it is, you can be like, oh, we can get a hundred boss stocks for that price. But I think we can have some fun conversation down below. Love to see what you guys are thinking. Also, if you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also definitely head over to teddyballstar.com. If you're all about affordable dive watches, we do have some great ones there. Also some higher end ones there as well. So a really good mix of brands on our site, over 25 brands, and helps make this content possible. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the content, subscribe here, and then also follow on Instagram. We just hit 100,000 followers there, so really do appreciate it. We're trying to post some awesome photos of watches lately, and I think, uh, at least I think they're pretty cool. So definitely go check it out and follow there. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well. 
and I'll see you all very soon.